handout. So if it's possible to sh for me to share my screen, I would at least be able to show the newsletter. Yeah, uh, I, I think Aaron provided you with those capabilities under the uh, share screen. Have you used Zoom before? I have. Just click on that share screen. Okay. You should be able to find it and then double click on your uh, window. Yeah, give that a try. Just if not, let me know. Can you see it? It's coming up. Yep. Out, so if it's possible to, yep, for well, me to share my screen, I would at least be able to show the news. Yeah, that'd be great. So do you want me to share it or is someone else going to share it? No, you could do it. We'll, we'll get started with the agenda and then we'll turn it over to you and then you can share your screen. So you can um, X out of that, choice. Okay. Would you like me to pull the agenda up, David, or do you just want to do that after Joyce's uh, share? Uh, no, go ahead and pull the agenda up, and then we'll transition with Joyce whenever she. Okay. Ready. Up okay. Yeah, I can see it. Aaron. And Joyce, you could leave your mic on mute until it's time to get started. Sometimes we get a little bit of feedback. Can you guys hear me? Hi, Julia. Yeah, we can hear you. Hi. Okay. Hi, David. Hi, Joyce. Good evening, AC Valley, and welcome to the May 9th, 2022 Allegheny Clarion Valley School Board Workshop. Tonight's meeting will be conducted virtually, and the Zoom links are always posted to the acbsd.org website. I welcome all school board members, administrators, and members from the public to this meeting. During this workshop, I will provide the school board members with information that will help clarify agenda items listed below. The school board will formally vote on these items on May 16th, 2022 at the school board meeting. Just keep in mind that the time frame associated with the school district's budget will impact the June dates. So the June workshop will be on June 9th and the voting meeting will be on June 16th. This will provide the administration time to ensure the budget is submitted by June 30th. As a friendly reminder, please keep your mic turned off until you're ready to speak. And at this time, Madam Secretary, can you please conduct the roll call? Carrie Armagost. Here. Megan Dreher. Brady Fight. Diane Page. Here. Jeff Powell. Here. Corey Sherman. Here. Jameen Stump. Here. Eric Sundling. 
And Kelly Terwilliger. Thank you, Tammy. This evening, we do not have any public participation, but we do have a presentation. And we have uh, Julie Fosdick from AmeriCorps and uh, Julie Raybuck here to present information about an exciting new opportunity for the district. And at this time, I'll turn it over to Joyce and um, Aaron, she's going to share her screen with us. Good evening. Thank you for the opportunity to uh, tell you a little bit about the accomplishments of the uh, students at AC Valley School District as they piloted a program this year which we call the AC Valley School Youth Corps. And these are the individuals uh, who are participant uh, this year. Uh, you can see their pictured left to right. But what I would like to share with you a little bit is about uh, what students have been able to do. Uh, we were doing a collaboration uh, to help with a community garden as well, but to date the members have basically been spending uh, most of their time mentoring children at the elementary school. Uh, this newsletter was prepared uh, for distribution to the board for representation for what they did for half of their terms of service. And you can see some of the pictures of, of the uh, youth interacting with the children. Uh, they, as of the date of this newsletter, they served 1,699 hours of tutoring over 147 children attending the AC Valley Elementary School in math and reading and other supportive activities. When these youth are finished on June 7th, they will have earned a total of $35,400 in living allowances and a total of $13,521.95 in an education award, which will be kept in their name for seven years. So it's nothing that they have to use uh, right away. So I wanted to share the newsletter with you a little bit and ask uh, Mrs. Raybuck to kind of explain some of the impacts that uh, the students have made in the AmeriCorps Youth Program and some of the responses from the teachers as well. And then I have another uh, handout that I would like to, I will be sharing with you. Mrs. Raybach. Okay. Uh, yes, thank you for having us. And to give you a little background, we started this program, we've had a co-op program where our seniors have been able to go to work a half day for um, approximately 25 years now. And way back when, when Keystone Smiles had um, some openings or availability for their, in their preschool, we started put using our co-op students who wanted to go into working with preschool children or be elementary teachers there. Over the years, we've had students continue in that program with Keystone Smiles being the host site. And then this year, we're always looking for opportunities for the other kids um, students who maybe couldn't get to Keystone or maybe didn't have that interest in being a, a, an elementary teacher. And we actually started two new programs where now we are the host site. Um, the first one was we have some students who actually work at the elementary three hours a day and on co-op. So they work down there in the morning and then come back up to the school in the afternoon for their senior classes. That was at the beginning of the year. Around November or December, we started a second program where being the host site so that we can continue then to host people through our AC Valley schools uh, where seniors who had a, a, a available time slots during a day where they had study halls would go down and we gave them a, a condensed uh, number of hours for the year and would go down to the elementary school throughout the day. Sometimes they go two periods in a row. Sometimes they go a period in the morning and a period in the afternoon and work with the students. So we have two programs now that we host ourselves through AC Valley. And these students have all been a tutor in the classrooms. They've worked with different grade levels. They assist the teacher in, uh, teachers in you know, whatever, um, whatever needs done, I guess. They, I know they read stories with them. They work with students one-on-one -on -one in areas that the student may be a little weaker. And I can say the teachers love the program. They love the student, the co-op part where they have a student three hours in the morning and they look forward every day to having these students a period, whether it's a 40 minute period or a double period of 80 minutes, they enjoy having the students. They are finding it very, very beneficial. 
Um, the kid, the students love it. We have students who want to return into regular positions there. Um, we have, you know, juniors who were very interested last year and this year, you know, would be would be interested in continuing that pro that particular program. So it's benefiting everybody. It's benefiting the, the students greatly. It's providing them with a living allowance, which is what we would call in the, the outside world, you know, a paycheck, but they call it a living allowance through AmeriCorps. Um, it's providing them a, a you know, a, a great thing to put on their resume that they have served in their community. And um, this education award is, you know, just the icing on top of the cake where they can, when they, they not only walk away from the serving position, but they also now have this chunk of money sitting waiting to help them in the future. So it's, there's nothing negative that has come out this entire time. Everything has been very, very positive, And we certainly hope that we can continue this for years to come. Thanks, Julie. And in addition to that, uh, some of the students who couldn't get all of their hours in that volunteered at the Boys and Girls Club as well. And the Boys and Girls Club has really appreciated the opportunity to get the extra hands. So what makes this different from a job? Um, obviously, they're earning the education award, but they're also rep they're a group of students. They're a core of people that are in a team and they're you know, trying to get things done. And what I really like about this program is that we, you are investing, we are investing in our own youth, hoping to help enhance their volunteer skills, their job skills as well, leadership skills and civic responsibility. I would like to now show, as you have been seeing, um, I'm sharing another screen with you. We can't, I cannot give you specific numbers. They are very, very close. It is a grants program and we haven't been awarded the 22-23 grants program. But this would be a little example uh, for discussion purposes. Uh, this flyer only depicts a 300 hour term of service. Most of the students did a 450 hour term of service uh, this year. This would just give you a little bit of an example. We would recruit, we recruit high school students uh, during the summer, the end of the school year. We would get them enrolled. They have clearances that have to be done. We pay for all of that. This is a grant, but unfortunately grants do require, you know, a little bit of local uh, support. So uh, I'm just kind of showing you an overview, but if we had youth, they would have a 900 hour or 300 hour term of service, excuse me, where they would be serving about nine hours a week. And then every two uh, weeks, they would receive a gross living allowance of $192.50. When they finish their term of service, and we would base it on about a 30 or 32 week program during the school year, your education award on top of the $3,000 living allowance would be $1,374.60. Obviously, at a 450-hour position, the Edward goes up to about $1,600, and the living allowance goes up to about $4,080. Uh, if you kind of look at the bottom of the screen, it sort of shows you the cost of the AmeriCorps grants program. So uh, if a member is earning, a, the first column shows you with taxes and benefits the cost of financial cost for the living allowance. Members receive training. Uh, that's another piece we haven't talked about. They are CPR trained. They do mandated reporting. They, they get tutoring uh, support as well. They do some remote training uh, as well. We have this program at Punxsutawney and, and it's really exciting because, and I think I talked to Mrs. Rayback, uh, Rayback a little bit about this, but uh, Punxsutawney is giving credit for serving in AmeriCorps. So uh, they can possibly, if that's something that you would like to consider, giving them credit for serving their country and community in a civics class or connected somehow to some type of a history class uh, would be a possibility as well. We have costs for the members' gear and then their administrative costs as well. Um, some travel, we have some meetings. And uh, the, so the total cost for like a 300 hour position is about $8,019. Cost share uh, locally, which you can use Esser's money or Title IV money is $1,200. Uh, Keystone Smiles through the grant, 
generates $6,819 to support that position plus the $1,300 award. So the total cost for each individual in a $300 position was about $9,000 with a local contribution of $1,200. Um, that is the, the cost and the breakdown of the program. But you know what I would like to really emphasize is by continuing or adapting this program, you're investing in your own students, in your own community, and they are getting an opportunity to, you know, look at their career uh, goals. Yes, I'm going to be teaching. No, I don't. Or, you know, what kinds of other opportunities might be there out there. And so it might also be a good I really want to kind of say is there's a group of students out there that can really rock and roll, but do they have that opportunity? Uh, maybe because of, you know, family expectations or transportation limitations, those types of things. And this could really give that, that group of students. Uh, in fact, we have a young lady, Kara, and I'm sorry, Mrs. Ray, but I don't have her last name at the top tip of my uh, tongue, but she has enrolled for a summer program uh, here in Knox because she wants to continue and she would love to do a full-time position next year. So if she continues the AmeriCorps route, she could uh, earn close to um, $40,000 over the next four years and an education award of over uh, $12,000 and really have a career path that she's getting support and mentoring doing that as well. And she would love to come back to the elementary school. Uh, so that could just be something different from this, but this is our story and we're gonna stick to it. Right, Mrs. Raybuck? <laughs> right. Any questions? Um, I, I'll make a comment, Joyce, real quickly. I was just at a PARS conference and uh, we had one session talking about the um, statewide teacher shortage. And uh, we were brainstorming various different ideas. And I explained this AmeriCorps program and how beneficial it is, not only for our students right now and right here, but also that pipeline into education. And I know at least one of our gals are um, interested in moving into uh, the field of education. So this is going deeper than just um, tutoring the elementary students here at this elementary. I, I couldn't be more uh, happy with the program and seeing the kids. I watch them da walk down over the hill every single day with a smile on their face. <laughs> I'm not even kidding. You. <laughs> they're, they're excited to go to work. Anybody else? I can second what David said, um, you know, at the elementary school, the teachers have been exceptionally pleased with all of the kids that have come down from the high school to help us out. Um, and the kids do seem to be enjoying themselves as well. Our little ones look forward. Um, one of them even said that their favorite teacher was one of the AmeriCorps members. <laughs> um, so uh, it has been an extremely successful program for us down at the elementary school. So, um, Julie Raybach, do we have any idea how many students we could participate uh, in this program next year just for budgeting purposes? Well, when I had asked Joyce that question, like how many could we request, she said, well, you know, you, you talk and you come up with what you want to, or however many you want to request. Then you and I had spoken just briefly, and I know we had said, you know, the possibility of maybe having one per grade level. If we did that, we would be looking at maybe seven. Um, we, you know, we, and that would be the kids is 300 hours would be the kids who are doing it during their study halls. The 450 hour, the next level up, those could be kids that are working three hours a day on the co-op program doing the same thing, but they're down there for a three hour block. And then there's also that other level, which, you know, Joyce can talk to us later about, and that could be a full time. That could be this, you know, Kara, who is interested in continuing um, I think she'd be interested in any of the programs, but she would definitely, gra she's graduating, would be interested in the full-time. And, you know, we're not replacing any aides down there, but it's certainly providing all these programs to provide a lot of assistance and an aid at a very affordable price for, you know, the, the needs down there. And I'm, you know, as, as Lori said, I know the teachers are, seem to be really thrilled with it and really waiting for the kids to come. So I don't, we don't have a limit, I guess, um, to answer your question. We can request whatever okay. we feel that we could, we could supply, you know, enough students. And I haven't met with the students yet, so I don't have an answer for 
how many would be interested. I, you know, we, I don't want to get the cart before the horse. So. And may I just also add the way the program works, we're having problems just like the employers trying to recruit. We have about 120 full-time positions every year. So if we don't recruit full-time positions, we're allowed to convert them. So in reality, if you're looking at nine positions, that's really only three full-time positions. So that's why I say you could probably have whatever you want because we're still on that verge of how do we meet the expectations of the grant, not losing the money. PennServe, who is the state administration of um, the AmeriCorps program are very impressed by the innovativeness of Pensatawney, AC Valley School District, Erie Public Schools, um, Fairview, that they are starting to invest in their, Franklin School District also, invest in their own youth in this program to address the needs that can't be met, you know, on a, an adult level, so to speak. So we're, we're really looking at trying to invest in our youth and nurture them up through their adults and future careers. Great. Um, I don't want to speak for the school board, but um, I know from the administrative side of things that uh, we're really happy with this program and would like to continue on. So, Julie, I, I'd ask that if you see how many kids would be interested so that we can figure out a budget number. And uh, we're still working on the preliminary budget. And um, I know we could use ESSER money and we're trying to get that spent out and uh, Title IV as well. So um, I'm really excited about the program. OK, I will do that. And may I just add one more thing? The Education Award isn't for college only. It's for any training program that accepts Title IV money. So, you know, welding school, computer class, uh, anything that is furthering an individual's education that may not always just be college. Great. Thank you, Joyce. Okay. May you I just add ahead. one more thing, <laughs> sir? Excuse Keep me. Going. If you know of anyone that's 55 years of age or older that's interested in the AmeriCorps, they're allowed to gift their education award to a child, grandchild, or foster child. So even if you wanted to look at reduced position, <laughs> we have retired teachers that are coming back on a part-time basis and using that advantage. So I just wanted to throw that little bug in your ear as well. <laughs> well, that's important. That, that could help. It is. Okay, Joyce, you could uh, log out of that share screen and uh, we'll get the agenda back up there. And I really appreciate, appreciate your time this evening and uh, it's a wonderful opportunity. Thank you. Are there any questions for um, Joyce or Julie now since uh, Joyce had another meeting to attend to? Hearing none, we'll continue down through the agenda. Um, at this time, I'll open it up to see if there are any board concerns that uh, we have to be aware of this evening. Hearing none, if I can direct your attention to the consent agenda on page five, uh, we do have a number of uh, conferences and field trips, starting out with Dave Sittler. He's the AC Valley School Police Officer. He'll be a Trent attending a training at IUP. We'll be working with Mark Graff, um, who's over at Clarion Limestone right now to ensure that he's staying up to date with his required trainings. We have a request from Scott Tullio and the band parents to do a trip into Erie for the Victoria Prince Sunset Dinner Cruise. Uh, that'll be paid for by the participants. And then we do have a couple requests from Megan Bashline and also Ashley Miller to attend a uh, conferences. Uh, Megan and Ashley would like to go to the National Autism Conference. This is a conference that Ashley's attended several times in the past and talks very highly about it. Um, we do have money in Title IIA uh, to cover the cost. And as you can see, the uh, conferences at Penn State during the month of August. And then Megan also submitted a request to go to Slip Rock University for a one-day training for the 2022 Butler County Disability Summit. And then finally, we have Jessica Namelli. She's our elementary gifted teacher. She's putting in to take a group of students to the Math 24 competition on Oil City. Are there any questions about the conferences and field trips? Okay, going back up to letter B, we have uh, Courtney Chalmers. She's our part-time uh, 
district wide secretary. She'd like to um, also be a substitute aide. So we have her down for your approval. And then let her see the AC Valley Band Boosters utilizing the high school cafeteria on May 25th from 315 to 530 to distribute fundraising. Moving on to finance and purchase, we'll uh, discuss and pay the bills next Monday, letter A through I, and um, we'll move right into letter J. That's a, um, the 2022-2023 Pennsylvania Association of Rural and Small School Districts membership. We've been a member um, probably since Dr. Lucas Savage had first started here with PARS as a very affordable um, yearly membership. Just keep in mind that PARS was one of the uh, practitioners with the uh, fair funding lawsuit. And I'm going to read a little bit of information about this um, particular suit. Uh, just understand the complexity of the funding problem here in Pennsylvania and also the support that we get from PARS. The Education Clause of the Pennsylvania Constitution confers upon the General Assembly for unequivocally mandated the maintenance and support of a thorough and efficient system of public education. In its simplest terms, the General Assembly must provide a contemporary system of high quality public education in every corner of the Commonwealth. In the 21st century, the endpoint of such a system is clear providing all children the resources necessary to graduate as capable, engaged citizens ready to succeed in college and in family sustaining careers. The General Assembly, this is what the, the arguments against, the General Assembly has failed its duty at a profound cost to the children of the Commonwealth, to the students from low wealth school districts and to the school districts, organizations and families that initiated this lawsuit seven years ago. And this failure does not only cause a violation of the education clause, education is a fundamental right under the Pennsylvania Constitution. So there's a lot of work that still needs to be done. There's 1,500, um, correct that, 15,000 pages of manuscript that uh, was taken during the trial. The trial is over. The judge is deliberating on it. And um, there will probably be some kind of appeal. So it may be a, a few years, believe it or not, by the time we get to it, but PARS has initiated that particular lawsuit. So it's good to be a member, long story short. And then letter K, we have the all access pass from PSBA. We've been a member of PSBA for a good number of years as well. That's $6,845. And uh, they provide us with um, trainings information about any kind of changes in law. And also probably the most important aspect is the uh, policy development that we have with it. And letter L, that's been an ongoing discussion. Uh, we do have a contract in front of you this evening. That's from the uh, Vito group. They'd like to house their equipment for connectivity into the Riverstone Estates. I know there's some concern because um, we're not sure what that particular business is going in back there. Um, we do have the contract that was reviewed by Zach Sheckle, though, in front of you. Um, everything's in agreement with uh, Zach as far as the terms and the information presented. It's a three-year, 36-month contract. If we wanted to terminate it early, it'd have to be 180 days, 180 days uh, with a prior written notice. And, um, and, and uh, part of the agreement is that they'd be paying the district $250 per month to house the equipment here, which essentially covers the cost of the internet. Um, I don't know if there's any questions or discussions about that particular contract. Carrying on, uh, we'll continue on to letter M. We have a discussion in front of the school board about substitute pay. Currently, we pay $110 up to 20 days, and then 21 to 59, 120, and then uh, above 60 days, our, our subs are making $130 a day. A number of schools in the area are evaluating this as well, and um, we'll be discussing it this week. I uh, did hear from one of the school districts in Clarion County, and they increased that cost by um, $5 increment. So 115, 125, and 135 is what they want to. We can continue on with that discussion as I gather more information as uh, school boards continue to deliberate on this particular item. I can share that with the school board and be ready to, to make a change if um, that's what we'd like to do next uh, Monday. 
And then finally, uh, letter N, um, we don't have anything in front of you this evening. Uh, Andrea will present the preliminary budget next Monday. Uh, she'll show any kind of changes that we've had since April, and we'll put that on display after it's approved. Once it's on display, it'll be in public um, display for 30 days, and then we'll reconvene, approve the budget, and have it submitted to PD by June 30th. Are there any questions about finance and purchase before we move into personnel? Okay, I'm going to jump down to letter E and provide some clarification on E and F. Um, we did have Lori Kersey and Jackie Caldwell submit their letters of retirement again, just to specifically state that they'll retire at the end of the school year. Because if you recall, in April, there were specific dates down, and we didn't want that to impact their retirement. So they, again, nothing new here, but they will be formally retiring at the end of the 21-22 school year. And then letter G and H goes hand in hand, and that's part of the discussion that I'll have towards the end of the, uh, the workshop here as far as a potential new middle school model. Uh, letter G is the a discussion associated with abolishing the seventh and eighth grade science teacher position due to declining enrollment at the junior senior high school and to promote a middle school model in grade five, six community. And then letter H follows up with that as far as uh, transferring Sean Miller from the junior senior high school into the elementary school in the newly created fifth grade teaching position uh, with a primary focus on science. And I'm going to present some more detailed information, but if you recall back, um, one of the legs of a um, three-pronged approach that we're doing here at the district to try to reduce our budgetary cost is... Um, reduce staffing through attrition. And, and this is one example of what we can do. We have four teachers at the high school who are elementary certified. We can transfer or move any of them down here. My suggestion is to uh, move Sean Miller down because he, he is a voluntary uh, transfer uh, and focus in on our middle level PSA a test scores. Grades five, six, seven, and eight could all be impacted from this. Uh, we also have two teachers within the learning support department who has very low case numbers. Uh, that could be an option as far as transferring uh, somebody down to the elementary. And then also we talked about our home economics teacher with an elementary certification. Um, or we can leave status quo. We, we don't necessarily have to move anybody down. We just have more numbers of, of students at the elementary and at the high school. Um, and this is a concept that not only are we working with our staff, but we're actually being creative and, and proactive. And I'm working on a comprehensive plan right now, and that's something that's, um, you know, I have written in. I could easily uh, take it back out, but it is a very neat concept, and I'll dive into that a little bit more later on in the, the agenda. Letter I is a motion to transfer Courtney Rice into the K through sixth grade school counselor position. If you recall, Courtney is our grant-funded K through 12 school counselor will move Courtney into the permanent position. And then letter J is a motion to advertise to fill that grant funded position. And there is a um, gal in the area who does have the certification and just now graduating from college who could be interested. Letter K, L, M, N, and O. Um, those are all vol volunteers. They're parents helping out with um, different field trips. You can see that and participating here at the district. Uh, we will make sure that we have all the clearances here on file. Tammy does a wonderful job collecting them before the um, volunteers are out working with the students. And just keep in mind that all volunteers will work underneath the guidance of a district employee. And on the top of page three, Aaron will move down to letter Q. Uh, this is a ongoing um, um, I don't even know how to put it, <laughs> challenge here at the district to try to replace Jody Shakely. We um, advertised for the superintendent secretary last month. We interviewed, we had some very qualified candidates for the secretary position. But as we look and talk more with Jody and, and worked on the job description, we understand that a majority of her day is uh, working uh, directly with accounts payable. So we're going to modify that job description. We re-advertised it. We do have two candidates who applied for the accounts payable position. Uh, 
number of school board members and myself will interview this week and hopefully have a name and a salary for the school board to approve on Monday, May 16th. And letter R is a uh, letter of resignation from our athletic trainer, Kevin Kaufman, dated May 4th. Kevin's last day will be May 13th. We also have a motion down on this agenda to advertise for the vacated athletic trainer position. Uh, I put a call in to uh, Champs um, and Clarion. I, I think they go by a different name right now, but to see if they have anybody who could be interested or even a contract. And I've also contacted Union School District to see if they'd like to share their uh, athletic trainer. And their trainer is under contract. Uh, for the year and um, does all their home events. So we could probably use our that trainer would be on the field sometimes, but not uh, at every practice and every game. So I do recommend that we advertise for this position and try to fill it internally. I know we have the co-op and maybe we can get away with from two trainers at some point, but at this time it's, it's a really good um, safety net for our student athletes and the coaches. I know we covered a lot of material on personnel. Are there any questions for me at this time? David, can I just let the board members know that if they check their school email, um, I have the date on there when those interviews are being held for the accounts payable position, if they can just let me know if they're able to come to, come to the interviews. Thank you, Tammy. Okay, moving down into instructional services. Letter A. That's a motion to approve the AC Valley School District Title I complaint procedures for federal programs. As we support Kerry uh, Longo and prepare for the federal programs audit, we looked through some of the requirements and noticed that we didn't have a Title I complaint procedure. So we created a document that um, outlines various definitions associated with federal programs and then um, outline the procedure for filing a complaint. And, and in addition, we created a actual complaint form for our local community members. I don't foresee any complaints coming in. We, we do a uh, great job with our uh, Title I program down here at the elementary, but uh, to ensure compliance, we do have that document in front of you this evening for approval. And it's within your handout. Letter B, this is part of the ESSER money and just a motion. We did it last year, but I wanted to put it into writing that we will do a summer school remediation program at both the elementary and hopefully at the junior senior high school. At this time, we don't have a whole lot of um, interested teachers up there, but I'm sure Dr. Jordan will continue to work on that. Uh, that is part of the ESSER programming and money and um, our school district's ability to target learning loss. Letter C, this is part of the comprehensive plan, and I was able to finish it up early. It's the basis of our current AC Valley teacher induction program, which is uh, very good. I made some slight adjustments to it. I numbered the pages. I outlined specific duties for the mentor and the mentee, and um, this program runs an entire semester. No, I'm sorry, the entire year. And then at the end of it, the principal and myself sits down with both the mentor and mentee to sign off on that document. So nothing really changes it. It's, it's quite a hefty read, but it's within your packet if you'd like to look it over. And then at this time, I'm going to um, share my screen and I'll present some information on um, the middle school concept that I've been talking about. So um, I was at the high school and uh, did a observation on Sean Miller this past year and uh, was amazed by the interaction, hands-on learning that he had with the students. And um, this started the, the discussion with Sean about potentially moving down to the elementary as we um, continue to work on consolidating the budget and, and not replacing staff as they retire. And uh, Sean did submit a letter um, to voluntarily transfer into the elementary school. So I started off with a definition. The primary purpose of the middle school is to serve an educational facility to help in the transition from primary to secondary education, often by combining elements of both the upper primary and lower secondary school buildings to create an environment that is both familiar and new to the students. The goal of this educational change is to increase the students' responsibility and their own learning path develop time management skills, increase self-worth, 
increase PSSA test scores, and to support core, core content instruction. Prepare students to be independent learners at the junior, senior high school through facilitating learning opportunities that will empower all students to reach their individual potential. Move Sean Miller voluntarily into a fifth grade class. Provide teachers with core content specific teaching assignments. The administration will work with the teachers in grades five and six to create a schedule and teaching assignments. Staff will teach content specific material to students in grades five and six and have common planning periods. The model will be written into the comprehensive plan and will be in place for three years of this plan and will be reviewed and added into the next three year comprehensive planning cycle. And that will be to have consistent data across the six years. Just keep in mind that the um, comprehensive plan has to be reviewed every three years. And that was part of the hesitation from the teachers because this is the next greatest thing and it'll go away next year. If we have it in the comprehensive plan, it's definitely here for three years, if not six. Middle school model will be part of the new comprehensive planning goals that will target student achievement in grades five, six, seven, and eight in both math and the ELA. The goals that we, we will write into the comprehensive plan will be to increase the PSSA test scores by 2% each year. PSS scores will be evaluated each year. PSSA and PVOS, and the PVOS takes a snapshot of the student from the beginning of the year to the end of the year. It's called growth data. So we'll take a look at both PSSA and PBOS data to analyze and analyze it by both the teachers and administrators when the scores are released. Data will be gathered through both quantitative and qualitative methods. Both data sets will be used to help evaluate successes and identify areas in need of change. Students and staff will participate in surveys and interviews before the end of each academic year. Anecdotal evidence will be collected and reviewed with teachers and administrators prior to the new school year. Programming will be adjusted accordingly. And then attached to this, I do have a draft schedule. And again, it's a very rough draft, but we can take a look at exactly what this middle school model looks like. What kind of supports do we have for the teachers? We have professional development linked to IU6 and Patan. I also reached out the local school district to do a tour of their middle schools. I contacted Dr. Jeff Finch from Grove City and Dr. Uh, Alfonso Angelini from Slippery Rock, and they both opened up their schools for us to go over to visit before the end of the school year. Additional supports. We'll have the K through 12 grant funded counselor assigned to this community, and the average of one day per year per week, two and a half hours every couple of days, one and a half hours every day, we'll work with the staff because this will be needed as the students continue to grow and develop and uh, work through um, maybe some behavioral issues. One child specific aid will be assigned to this community. Transition planning for students to tour the junior high school throughout the year. This is a ongoing successful activity we're currently doing. And then with the major change, um, we have this in the budget right now, but this group of teachers will receive an additional $500 as they um, add to their supplies for the following year. And just an overview of the middle school rotation and, and the schedule associated with it, and pretty much outlined everything I said at the beginning. And I'm just going to work our way down through a modified schedule, um, Ann Butler and Nita Orton, and again, just keep in mind, folks, this is a very rough draft. Uh, they'll get their kids in the morning. All the students will be assigned to a particular teacher's homeroom. They'll start the day off with PBIS activities that they're currently doing. And then uh, just a, a, an example, um, there could be a bell system set up that students will spend certain time with one teacher and then transfer into the next. So just for the sake of uh, discussion, uh, Ann Butler would start out with her students. And then uh, period two, would uh, she'd be working with Sean Miller's students. They'll be working on a rotating fashion. They all have a common planning period, which is really important. Uh, and then Anita Orton's students will transfer in. And then, um, you know, we can have a remediation period set up. We can have enrichment. Uh, the bottom half of the schedule we can get really creative with. Uh, lunch, recess and then um, win groups. And this is something that uh, Mrs. Sherman and the staff are working on right now. Again, just a rough 
draft of it. And then also to enhance it, we do have club period. We can do club period, whether it's every Friday or, or one Friday out of the month. But again, get the kids exposed and try to um, provide a, a little bit more fun with their learning as they continue to grow and develop timeline. Um, we started the discussion with the preliminary budget because we do have a high school teacher in the budget moving uh, from the junior, senior high into the elementary. I did have a staff meeting on April 20th with the administration teachers from five and six, as well as uh, Sean Miller. And May 16th, we have this motion to transfer Sean down, motion to approve the school board planning or, or not. Maybe we have different ideas, but this, this is what I have for you this evening. And then May 17th, we're going to make some minor adjustments to the budget if this plan is approved uh, because we'll be moving the staff around. May, I don't have a date set because we'll have to work around the subs, but we can tour, and I haven't got a hold of Franklin yet, but we can tour one or both of those. Uh, Grove City, I hear their middle school is uh, brand new and state of the art. And then on May 31st, we'll have our third and final comprehensive planning meeting. And at this time, I'll specifically invite the incoming fifth grade parents as well as the new sixth grade parents into this meeting to um, answer any kind of questions they may have, provide additional insight to the uh, model. It's not going to change a whole lot, folks. Our, our curriculum remains the same. Um, my vision of this is to have the teachers be more specific on content that, uh, that they love to teach. I mean, Anita Orton is fantastic with math and, and uh, Ann Butler and, and Derek and, and Carrie and, and Sean, getting that group work together. I, I tell you what, they're, they're some absolutely fantastic educators. The specific plan isn't completely drawn out yet, only because it's, it's still preliminary. And then I just have some facts and questions below. Um, why are we moving to this model? Again, just what I said earlier, hopefully we can have the students take more of an ownership in their learning and provide the teachers with a limited scope of uh, planning and preparation. So what's the difference? Um, not a whole lot of difference, uh, but we're going to be rotating the students around, put them on a bell schedule, um, make different transitions during their core content learning. And again, the students will be able to take more of an ownership. When will this take place? It could start at the beginning of the 22-23 school year and serve students in grades five through six. And just keep in mind too, the concept of that middle school would be uh, consolidated in that five, six community. Uh, there's no changes in the curriculum. It's an exciting and challenging process making any kind of change. And I know um, change is uncomfortable for people. Uh, the common planning period will provide the staff with time to plan cross curricular learning activities review their data, lesson planning tied to power standards, and the current curriculum will not be a change. It's aligned to the state standards. What's the social impact of having fifth and sixth grade students change classrooms for content instruction? The middle school model will enable the students to acquire social and emotional skills needed to successfully transition to the junior, senior high school. The middle school administrators and staff will work to ensure a safe, inclusive environment or safe, inclusive school community for all students. The design of the new model will allow separate learning communities, the curriculum, and activities will differ among grade levels. And um, I have a unique opportunity to spend time in both buildings um, every day. And I, and I see the kids at the elementary and I see the kids at the junior, senior high school. And for years, we've struggled making that transition. Uh, we've, we've redone the curriculum. We've brought in coaches over the years. We, we wrote the KTO grant years ago. Um, we, we have teachers who are teaching very hard every single day. They're putting their heart and souls into it. It's not the teacher's fault by any means. I think it's more program um, oriented. I think the students um, are not taking that ownership within their learning. And just these slight little changes could really help in that. Um, and, and funding, just finishing off the school or this piece of the, uh, the agenda. There's no additional cost for staff building upgrades. The teacher will be provided with the $500 I referenced earlier. We also have Title IV money that we're sending out to each grade level that they can spend $950 on it. And I had Mark look into the new bell system. And if we were to put a different panel with labor and cost, it'd be $2,830 um, for that change with the bell up at the um, five, six community. 
So this time, uh, Aaron, you can pull up the agenda and I'll open it up for any kind of questions or comments from the uh, school board. David, this is Corey. Um, I just have a couple quick questions. Um, first, mainly to Lori, um, is this gonna affect anything else going on in the building as far as staffing? And what were the thoughts of the fifth and sixth grade teachers um, to move to this model? Um, well, so as far as the staffing, um, we obviously welcome the addition to the five, six community because we do have a pretty fifth, pretty large fifth grade coming in. Um, but it did impact uh, the one, two community because, you know, rather than replacing each of the teachers leaving there, um, we're now looking at going down to two in first grade, most likely, um, as our incoming kindergarten class continues to grow. So, um, there would be that impact in first grade. First grade currently will have 20 students per room, um, barring whatever we have at new student registration in August. So that's in response to your first question. Does that answer what you're asking? Um, yes, it does. Okay. Um, say your second question again so I can be sure I address it correctly. Um, my second question was the thoughts of the fifth and sixth, sixth grade teachers um, on moving to this model. Um, well, we did have a meeting, David and I and Bill and the fifth and sixth grade teachers um, and Mr. Miller was in that meeting as well. Um, the schedule as presented here in this was not something that any of us were really in favor of. Um, and I can tell you the reasoning was the amount of instructional time lost for ELA and math. Um, you know, those are the two areas, especially math, where we are looking to improve our um, scores and our performance. Um, we currently have 90 minutes of ELA and 60 minutes of math in our schedule, in addition to 35 minutes of wind time and in ELA and 20 minutes of wind time in math. Um, that schedule as presented brings us down to 84 minutes of ELA if it's divided between the two teachers and only 42 minutes a day of math, um, which means we lose about 90 minutes a week in math. So we would definitely want to um, have a discussion about that schedule. Um, you know, we what we had looked at and, and mentioned that, you know, we thought could work better was doing sort of a middle school model, um, bringing that extra person down from the high school um, and continuing to trade among fifth grade and sixth grade. We currently do trade among fourth, fourth grade trades among itself, fifth grade trades among itself, and sixth grade trades among itself. This is the first year that we've done that. Um, and it's been going pretty well. Fourth grade had three teachers this year, fifth and sixth grade each had two. Um, now next year, we're gonna be down to two fourth grades, um, but they were able to successfully trade uh, with three teachers this year um, and keep the trades minimal. Um, Trading around all five teachers increases the trade amount time as well. Um, and I would think that we would lose you know, in a perfect situation, maybe 10 to 15 minutes per day of trade time. Um, you know, we have 20 minutes of math win right now and I'm, I'm fearing that we would lose that math win time um, because of the additional amount needed for trade. Um, having that five teacher rotation also would kind of impact the way that we use our specialists um, because at any given point of the day in fifth and sixth, um, there would be two ELA classes happening and a math happening. So for um, our reading specialists or our intervention specialists or our math coach to you know, push in and coach in any of those classes is gonna make that much more difficult in addition to still pushing in and helping K through four. Um, so as obviously we're not opposed to the third teacher in or the third teacher in fifth grade, that would be excellent because we do have a big fourth grade going into fifth grade. Um, but those are those are some of my initial concerns. <laughs> okay. Um, would it would some of this model still work, David, if we kept it within the grade? Um, yeah. Okay, I'm just thinking, I mean, we definitely want to involve the teachers and, and Lori in this whole process because, I mean, they know what works. They know the students they have. Um, and I know you said that was a rough schedule, so obviously we can 
we can tweak that. But we just want to make sure that we're not giving up um, instructional time just by saving and kind of through that attrition where we're moving some staff around just to make sure we're keeping up with the same education that we're doing now. And we are also looking for ways to increase our science time, um, you know, because that is a concern K to six, um, that we'd like to have more time for science, um, which was why I talked to you all about that addition of the STEM uh, special. You know, that's, it's not a giant increase, but um, we would like to add that in so that we get a little bit more time for some of the sciences. Um, but adding a third, fifth grade teacher, you know, that teacher could take on science um, as part of the time period that that teacher would have as well. So, you know, we could have a, a more dedicated science and social studies time there. David, now the motion that's on here to approve this model, is it as you have it in the paperwork or is there a lot of tweaking we can do with this? We're just simply approving the middle school style model. Um, I mean, that, that schedule is, is definitely a rough draft um, moving into it. I mean, it, I don't know how much we want to tweak it. I mean, it, I mean, I, I can continue to work with uh, Mr. Sherman and the teachers that we try to fine tune what that looks like. I'm not opposed to it, but we got, we got to remember folks, we've been doing this for 17 years since I've been here and, and hitting the kids with more and more time and more and more instruction um, may not be the key, you know, may, <laughs> making a little bit of a, uh, you know, ownership from within the students to, to be able to make that transition. And, and I'm not sure how many people has gone through middle school, but, you know, I was fortunate to have that experience growing up. So I know that I went from a self-contained elementary school into a middle school and it really helped that transition. And if you look at the test scores in Grove City and Slippery Rock, and um, there's various other variables in there, believe me, but um, they're very good. And, and just knowing it and, and having that understanding um, I'm afraid if we water it down too much and we might as well just stop the discussion and uh, just keep doing what we're doing. Would we be able to hear from the, the teachers before, the, you know, the fifth and sixth grade teach some of them before, before we made this decision? Yeah, I believe I talked to Mrs. Thompson and I believe the teachers are going to show up at the uh, voting. Meeting. So um, yeah, they can present at the beginning and um Again, I, folks, I'm just trying to help out here and come up with a creative way, creative way to utilize our staff and the strengths that they have and to target the um, test scores and the student successful transition from the elementary to the high school. I think we all want that. Uh, I think we want we want all perspectives. That's all. For sure, I agree with you, Jeff. Yeah, David, I, I like the model. I just that that piece about the math just that's a big big jump from 90 minutes down to 42 or whatever it is yeah for sure i mean i we if, if we do approve it we can continue to, to modify what that model looks like and put it back in front of the school board and i'd just like to have something in place and, and the reason why i'm pushing for a an approval with this is because and again this comes straight from the teachers we don't want to dive into this for one year and then throw our hands up and quit and go back to what we've always done we want to put something into place and, and again that thing could could be changed I, I mean i'm more than willing to work with the elementary staff on that but i i think we need to get something in place that's going to be sustained for an extended period of time so that we can reap the benefits from it yeah i agree with that um, but as Jeff mentioned, if we, I guess, get their perspective on it and, and get there any way to, to work it. Is there any way to meet with the teachers before even that meeting? I, I, I mean, I realize we're, we're within a week here, <laughs> but uh, is there any way to hear from them before that? Um, I'll turn that over to Mr. Sherman. I, I you know, with uh, interviews, senior night, um, I don't have to. I probably can't facilitate that meeting. Um, yes, I can check in with them. I'm sure they'd be willing to do that, you know, whether it's in person or even if you wanted to have some kind of virtual meeting, whatever works best for everybody. I'm happy to do that. Well, uh, just let us know what the availability would be b beforehand. Yeah, let me know, Lori. I'll definitely jump in that. Um, I know me, Eric, and Kelly were in the 
initial kind of staff meeting. So yeah. I'm good with doing this. Sure. I can check with them tomorrow. Yeah. And Lori and I could work, work around those days if we can do it maybe after the interviews on, on Thursday or even Wednesday evening. I, we, we can try to find some availability. Okay. Yeah. And even if it's like Jeff mentioned, if it's Zoom or whatever it is, we'll try to work it in. Sounds good. Any other questions or comments? Okay, hearing none, we'll move into policy. Uh, we do have the second reading of the homeless students and educational stability for children and foster care in front of you. And uh, we went through some of the uh, minor language changes last, last month. So uh, <clears throat> yeah, nothing's changed with that. Under transportation, we have Tracy Irwin, and uh, she's looking to add a driver, Amber Preston. Upon receipt of all the documentation, she'll have an additional sub, which we're always looking for. And then we'll drop the whole way down into correspondence. And um, this was just a letter from uh, Ted Tarrin, a, one of the, um, the county commissioners. And uh, we've been working on broadband internet for um, a year and a half now. And... Uh, they did a study up there and they just provided there's no significant impact of a notice of intent to request release funds. So they're moving forward with this. And I just put that on the school board agenda to share with the uh, community that we are continuing to move forward. And then as we finish off this evening, um, I did work on the um, athletic field uh, committee. I reached out to youth football, varsity football, and um, key staff members here on the district. And I do have a uh, commitment from a number of people. Um, if you know anybody else who wants to be on the committee, let us know. But my goal is to utilize this committee to um, review various grant opportunities, maybe fine tune the planning for uh, the football field and um, do what we can to raise money and, and hopefully present a um, package to the school board as we enter into next budget season and prepare for the summer. All right, uh, that's what I have for you this evening. And uh, I'll open it up one more time before we close. Are there any questions or comments about the items? I know we covered a lot of material this evening and, and we do have that big ticket item, the uh, school board um, approved budget in front of you that will need to be approved and on the public display. And uh, again, I mentioned earlier about that three-pronged approach to try to reduce our budgetary deficit. Um, I am still working on the other two. You know, we are taking over special education classrooms here on campus and been working with our uh, special education director on making that transition and finishing off the federal programs as well as the uh, special education audit. And then also, um, I've been in close contact with Mike McGacky from Titusville, and we have a list of students that are in outside cyber as well as our homeschool students. And uh, I'll be making the first round of phone calls next week, starting on them at least, and then sharing that information out with Mike. And I'm gonna have Mike and Julie work together on it. And we continue to make a push in Harrisburg to have a um, level funding formula for outside cyber. And if you recall, Governor Wolf's budget proposal hit a flat rate of $9,500 per student going to outside cyber. So if the budget does get approved and that's added to it, that's going to be a significant saving and, and would definitely be moving in the right direction. So hearing no other questions or comments, we'll go ahead and conclude the meeting and we'll see everybody uh, next Monday. Sounds good. Thank you. Have a great night, everybody. Thanks, Bernie.